Right, oh, Triumph has finally dropped its new 400cc range, which is set to arrive in early 2024. Aimed at giving Triumph a more approachable entry point to the range, the new Speed 400 and Scrambler 400X bring impressive spec to the sub 400cc category, along with killer modern classic styling. But in case you've been living under a rock, there is already a classically inspired British heritage brand in the segment, Royal Enfield. So, how do the up-and-coming Triumphs compare to their most direct global market competition, the Royal Enfield Hunter 350 and Scram 411? Let's dive in and take a closer look. Hunter 350 vs Speed 400 As a modern classic styled roadster, both brands now have an option. But, both bikes are very different in a number of ways, so it'll be very interesting to see what the pricing of the Triumph Speed 400 is once it is revealed around December 2023. However, as you'll see as we start to compare the specs, it's fair to say that the Speed 400 will carry quite a price premium over the rather basic Royal Enfield Hunter 350. Let's start with the heart and soul of the bikes, their engines. Royal Enfield's Hunter 350 utilises the brand's 349cc single overhead cam J-Series engine. It's, it's a, a lovable little thing, if a bit on the low powered side for many punters. But it'll run on 91 ROM fuel, or worse, thanks to a really low 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. Being air cooled also means that it doesn't have the added maintenance of a water cooling system, and it's pretty much tough as nails. Power is acclaimed... 20.2 brake horsepower at 6,100 RPM, but thanks to its long stroke design, which is a classic Royal Enfield element, it's got 27 Newton meters of torque there, ready to help it hold speed once it gets up there. Transmission is a 5 speed unit, going back to a chain drive. The new Triumph Speed 400 on the other hand is almost the complete opposite to the Enfield, with the only real similarity being that it is also a single cylinder engine. The new Triumph TR series engine at the centre of both new bikes measures in at 398cc and puts down a very healthy 39.5 horsepower and 37.5 Nm of peak torque. That's thanks to a 4 valve head dual overhead cams and a 12.1 compression ratio. Naturally, being a much more modern engine design, it also includes water cooling to keep things in check. So, it comes to 20.2 horsepower versus 39.5 in the power stakes. Old school versus modern engine design. What about weight? Both bikes utilise a 13 litre fuel tank, yet the Hunter 350 tips the scales at 181 kilograms wet with a full tank of fuel, while the Speed 400 measures in at a low 170. In an interesting move, Triumph has gone pretty premium on the suspension side with 43mm big piston upside down forks with a monoshock rear and external reservoir. The suspension on the Speed 400 has 140mm and 130mm of travel and braking is pretty high end too for a Lambs class bike and comes in the form of 300mm disc at the front with a 4 piston vibrate caliper on the Speed 400. The Hunter 350 from Royal Enfield keeps things simple with a traditional 41mm fork with 130mm travel and twin tube emulsion shock absorbers with 6 step adjustable preload at the rear. Tech wise both are quite similar with the Enfield and Triumph both sporting analog speedos with inbuilt LCD displays for other info. The Royal Enfield however can be fitted with the cool little tripper navigation pod which gives it a level of connectivity and function that the Triumph simply doesn't have. Both are backed by ABS braking as a safety feature, with the Triumph also scoring switchable traction control as well. It's looking clear at this stage the Triumph is going to be the sportier bike to ride, but that will come at a yet to be determined cost. The big selling point for Royal Enfield is that it costs just $7,590 plus on road costs here in New Zealand. It's insanely good value as a commuter, and as I found out while I had it on test, it'll happily cruise along the expressway at 110 kilometers an hour and it is an utter joy in the city. It'll be really interesting to see how Triumph compares in that regard. Scram 411 vs Scrambler 400X When it comes to the Scrambler game, both manufacturers are fronting with decent Lunar approved models in the form of the Royal Enfield Scram 411 and the Triumph Scrambler 400X. Engine wise, the Triumph uses the exact same TR series engine as the Speed 400. That means, once again, it is a single cylinder with dual overhead cams and water cooling with a power output of 39.5 horsepower and 37.5 Nm of torque. 
The infield, however, uses the firm's slightly older 411cc platform with 24.2 horsepower and 32 newton meters of torque from the single overhead cam air-cooled engine. Just like the J-Series engine found in the Hunter, the Scram 411 engine is a low compression affair with 9.5 to 1 compression ratio and features a long stroke meaning it lopes along at a gentle pace. When it comes to weight, again things are a little different. The Scram 411 tips the scales at 185 kilos with a full 15 litres of fuel. The Triumph weighs in at 179 kilograms by comparison, but just like the Speed 400, the Scrambler 400X only holds 13 litres of fuel. Fuel economy stats aren't yet available for the Triumph, but that could be potentially limiting. Suspension on the Triumph is the same as the more road-oriented Speed 400, albeit with extra travel at both ends. That's 150 mils of travel front and rear. The Scram 411 goes old school with its conventional 41mm forks, but it outshines the Triumph in terms of travel with 190mm at the front with the monoshock at the back having 180mm of travel. Again, the instruments are quite similar with the Scram also having the option of Enfield's cool tripper navigation pod. The Scrambler 400X has the same electronics as the Speed 400, but its ABS is switchable for off-road use. The Enfield has ABS, but it is not switchable, at least in the traditional sense. You can do a burnout to confuse the computer and turn off the ABS, but this also turns off the Speedo as well, which is obviously not an ideal solution. It's hard to say how far you'll actually take the Triumph off-road, however, unlike the Royal Enfield which features tough spoked wheels and tube tyres, the Triumph uses cast alloy wheels with tubeless rubber. Both bikes are nearly identical both bikes wheels are nearly identical in size with 19 and 17 inches in circumference and slightly different tyre sizes for each model. The Scram 411 is priced from $8,290 here in New Zealand, while the Scrambler 400X is yet to have its pricing announced. So what can we take away from this? While the Triumph is clearly after a similar rider to Royal Enfield, they're not after the same rider necessarily. Going through the specs, Triumph's new 400s are much more modern and premium bikes than the simple and affordable Enfields. Royal Enfield make terrific transportation and beginner gut bikes. They're easy to ride, simple to own, and quite a lot of fun in the right circumstances. The new Triumph 400s appear to be slotting in above the Royal Enfield position in the market and will offer a lot of what we've asked Royal Enfield for, but at a more premium price point. If the prices match the Royal Enfield bikes, I will happily eat my helmet lining. It's a smart move by Triumph as Royal Enfield already has that first rung of the market locked up, so building machines to slot into that gap between the Enfields and their own larger displacement models like the Speed Twin 900 for instance, should find them plenty of riders who want a modern classic but for whatever reason can't get into that 900 or 1200cc Triumph. Hopefully we'll get a good ride of both the Speed 400 and Scrambler 400X once they launch to get a handle on exactly where they fit into the motorcycling ecosystem. But what do you think? Are Triumph really going after Royal Enfield or, like I think, are they slotting into a slightly different point in the market with slightly more premium machinery? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you very much for watching this on-throttle video. I have been Matt. I'll see you on the next one.